late 1700s, two men play a card game in a hunting lodge on a stormy night. This hunting lodge would later be known as the Hellfire Club. During their card game, a stranger walks through the woods, seeking shelter. He eventually arrives at the same hunting lodge. The two men welcome him by letting him join their card game. This stranger was an odd man. There just seemed to be something off about him. One of the men drop their cards. When they go underneath the table to pick it up, the man is shocked to see that the stranger has a cloven hoof. As soon as the man realizes that Satan himself has joined their card game, the stranger vanishes, leaving behind a strong smell of brimstone. In Ireland, over 300 years ago, back in the late 1600s, a man named William Connolly practiced law, training to be an attorney. At the same time, the Battle of the Boyne, a civil war between Catholics and Protestants, was coming to an end. After the victory of the Protestants, William Connolly bought and sold various estates that were forfeited by the Catholics who were defeated at the Battle of the Boyne. This soon made Mr. Connolly the richest man in Ireland. Not only was Connolly a lawyer and the richest man in Ireland, but he was also a very successful politician in 1715 becoming Speaker of the Irish House of Commons, which was the most dominant figure in Parliament. <laughs> he soon started using his abundance of wealth to build great mansions that showed people that the owners were some of the best of the political and social elite in Ireland. These mansions were known as castle townhouses. In 1725, Connolly found a perfect spot on top of Mount Pellier that looked out over the great city of Dublin. This was a perfect spot for another castle townhouse, but the top of the hill was already taken by an ancient sacred Neolithic passage tomb. Damn it, Connolly! <laughs> this didn't stop Connolly from building his next castle townhouse. To clear a spot for the lodge he had in mind, he destroyed the tomb, including a cairn. Th that's a cairn. That's what a cairn is right there. It's those rocks. If not bad enough, Jerk Connolly used the same stones from the sacred hilltop in the construction of his lodge. Stones that once marked the final resting place of the dead. Connolly had eventually constructed a grand hunting lodge with a wooden roof. Hope it was worth it, because soon after building, a terrible storm ripped the roof right out the building! People said, This was the work of the angry pagan gods, getting back at Connolly for destroying the ancient grave. He ignored the townspeople and replaced the roof with one of solid stone, the one that is there to this very day. In 1729, William Connolly died, leaving the hunting lodge unoccupied for years, until it became the new hangout spot for Dublin's Hellfire Club. In Britain and Ireland in the 17th century, there were very exclusive clubs for those of the highest stature. Persons of quality, most who were very involved in politics. These clubs were places of these great men to let loose and partake in immoral acts. These clubs started off as an exclusive underground society where the wealthy and politicians would mock religion, play pranks on each other, and worship the gods of Beatrice, god of wine, and Venus, the goddess of sex. They technically didn't worship the devil, but they did embrace sin. They called themselves demons, and the leader of their club, who dressed up as the devil in robes and horns, was called the King of Hell. Really? So ironic! There was once a man, and his name was Richard Parsons, and he was the first Earl of Rose. After six years of being the first Grand Master of the Irish Freemasons, he stepped down, inherited a small fortune from his grandmother, and went off on a tour of Europe and Egypt. While on his trip, he gained a reputation for being a sorcerer of black magic. It is said that during his time in Egypt, he came across ancient Dionysian scrolls that had been looted from the Great Library of Alexandria. When Parsons came back to Ireland, he wrote a book called Dionysus, called Dionysus Rising, 
based on the scrolls, and made a society called the Sacred Sect of Dionysus. A society that constantly celebrated the joys of partying. When the society disbanded, he founded another society, known as the Hellfire Club! And after about 10 years, these underground Hellfire Clubs with these politicians and wealthy people, it started to die down, and the life of the party had ceased. But soon, um, they kind of tried to like start it up again, you know, with like human sacrifice and devil worshipping. So, that happened. My family was taking a vacation to Ireland, and I thought, eh, why not try to meet the devil himself? So before leaving, I spent all my money on real, professional ghost hunting equipment to prepare myself for my investigation. What kind of ghost hunting equipment? I'm glad you asked! Number one, the digital recorder! Ghosts and spirits are trying to communicate with you, but you just can't hear them because their ears are not sensitive enough. A digital recorder's microphone is sensitive enough to pick up on those very subtle, sub-frequencies that ghosts are said to be talking through. So when you're asking spirits by the other side, make sure to be recording yourself with a digital recorder. Then a few minutes after your questions, play it back and listen very closely. And maybe you'll be able to hear those spirits that have answered you. Number two, the EMF meter. Ghosts are said to be made up of this electromagnetic energy, kind of like this static in the real world. The EMF meter shows you if there's an electromagnetic field around you, because when ghosts are around you, it's said that your arm hairs will stand up on end, you'll get goosebumps, chills, you'll feel like someone's watching you. That's probably because there's a spirit right behind you. Number 3. The Spirit Box What this little device does is it rapidly scans through radio frequencies. Ghosts can pick out words through these frequencies and talk to you through the white noise. You just have to listen very carefully. After a six hour flight from Chicago to Dublin, I was ready. I spent most of my money for that trip on taxis alone, just trying to get to Montpellier. After arriving, I hiked to the top through an awesomely creepy Celtic forest. I continued to hike. And I hiked some more. After my somewhat long journey, I finally made it to the top of Mount Pellier, where proudly stood the ancient hunting lodge. The view of the city of Dublin was amazing, but the real-life personal view of the old jagged stone building was so much better. I was finally here after all my preparation, and I was thoroughly disappointed. There were so many goddamn people on top of Mount Pellier. Because the Hellfire Club, the building that was once visited by the devil himself, was now a public landmark with lazy amateur spray paint on the ancient walls and wrappers of gas station candy bars scattered over the hilltop. What had become of this ancient unholy ground? But I still had high hopes when actually going inside the Hellfire Club, entering through the small doorway in the side of the front wall and being welcomed by the sexiest creepy stairs I have ever seen. Just up the few steps was the room where supposedly satanic rituals still occur to this very day. This is where I spend most of my time, in the darkest, most concealed room in the Hellfire Club. I took out my EMF meter, and I seemed to be not getting anything, with seemingly the only device I could use since other people were running around screaming and talking that would make it impossible to capture an EVP on the digital recorder. Stuff. 
Nevertheless, I still took out my spirit box and my digital recorder for an EVP session. All right. I'm completely alone in here. Completely alone. So talk. Does it piss you off that this place has now become a theme park? Does it make you mad that children now run around here screaming and laughing? If you're here, then do something. Talk to me. Do something. Hello? Came all this way here to see you, come on. After minutes of recording, I got nothing. The only evidence that could possibly be called evidence is with the EMF meter. During my time inside that small room, the EMF meter randomly spiked extremely high every few minutes. This EMF meter does not just randomly spike after being turned on for a while. Spirits are said to be made up of electromagnetic energy, and this EMF meter was showing me that some kind of energy was in that room with me. Maybe it could have been these ancient rocks giving us some kind of energy or the top of the hill was some kind of small magnetic hotspot on planet Earth. I didn't get any EVPs or footage of disembodied shadow figures or even a single orb, but I did get random spikes on the EMF meter, possibly showing me that there was something spiritual in that room. But then again, maybe not. It's whatever you believe in.